Hey everybody, welcome to this little video about the Song of a Spirit uh, minigame. Now, I am missing a pretty big feature, which is a comprehensive tutorial system for teaching the player how to play the game. So, this video will act as a little temporary quick starter guide, so to speak. So, the first piece of information that you need to know is, to go to full screen, you use either, either Alt-Enter or F11. There we go. Perfect. So we're going to start with a new world. And the first piece of information you need to know is how to place things into the world. So tab opens up your inventory. Q opens up your creative panel. Let's grab a couple of solid blocks. These act as your musical grid so that you can align things a little bit easier. And then we will take some music notes. Let's try Ghastly Piano. Sure. And then there you go. We can now place with the left click a few orbs. Now, to change the tone of the orb, hold down control. And then you can see at the bottom, the piano represents which notes you are about to place. So let's say we're going to do... You can use the scroll wheel on your mouse in order to, uh, to select which note you'd like to place. Okay, now in order to play these notes, you have to use a tool called Tuning Fork. So select the Tuning Fork in the hotbar using the scroll wheel, and then... Beautiful. As a matter of fact, if I want to move a note, since I don't like it, I can select an empty slot so nothing is equipped and drag it out of the view. Now, besides playing the notes one at a time, you can also glide through the notes using the middle mouse button. Perfect. Now, how do we actually create, say, a sequence? To create a sequence, we have to use a totem. We're going to select it in the hotbar place one totem above and one totem below and the angle at which these totems are placed is going to determine which direction uh, the beam the trigger beam is going to fly and the trigger beam is what allows you to trigger these orbs so to connect the totems together we use a little totem wand which looks like a uh, chocolate granny lady from the SpongeBob episode. We're going to click on the top totem and the bottom totem, and now they're connected. To trigger them, we use a tuning fork. There we go. Now, if we have a runaway beam that uh, isn't terminated, and we have to close it, we're going to go ahead and use one of these block nodes, which is a, a red node, and just slide it across the beam. Now, to set the speed of our trigger beam, we have to populate a number of timing crystals. So to do that, we're going to grab the timing crystals out of the creative panel. And the number of these crystals you place determines how many, uh, how fast the beam is going to travel. Now to fine tune this value, you can actually hold shift and then remove half the stack, place it in the inventory, or hold control and left click to remove one. This should be fairly familiar if you played Minecraft. Now, how do we make this loop and self-retrigger? Well, we can place one of these red nodes, which essentially not only terminates the trigger beam, but also initiates another trigger by itself. So, you can see it gets uh, lit up in red. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a couple of regular wire nodes, which are not detectable. I'm just going to place some of this stuff away. We're going to use some of these wire nodes to establish a nice straight line directly to the totem. So to connect them, we have to use a wire. There we go. Click and drag in order to establish a connection. And now, if I use the tuning fork... Nice. 
Nice. Now, we don't want to have runaway, unstoppable sequences. So, I'm going to select an empty slot and move this node away. Now, this doesn't really help because now we have a runaway trigger and God knows what it's going to end up triggering on the other side. So, what we're going to do is instead keep this in place, but I'm going to use a mallet in order to destroy. There we go. Destroy it. And we want to have a manual way of disabling the sequence. So, for that, we're going to use a lever. Select the lever in the hotbar, place it down, and then grab a wire and run the wire through the lever. So now, if the lever is off, it will not pass on the trigger. If you toggle it on, the whole system now is self-sufficient. Now, let's say we have this sequence of notes uh, delimiting one pattern, and we want to trigger another pattern after, say, this one has finished playing uh, twice. Well, one thing we can do is this. We can place, let's say, a second column of uh, plates for alignment purposes. And let's say we're going to use this sound. Okay, we're going to make sure that they don't get crossed over. So these ones probably need to be moved slightly further down below. Or we can simply move this totem a little bit above. Now to create a second sequence, we're going to place another totem down here. And then you can connect these totems together like this. Which means... You can trigger both of them independently. Of course you need to watch out for... There we go. For crosstalk. We're going to place the same number of crystals. So it looks like 31 was the other number. There we go. That's good. We're going to place this away. Beautiful. So if you want to make sure... we got a runaway beam over there. Take that. Erase it. Nice. Uh, if you want to make sure that uh, these totems don't cross-talk between each other, we could place them technically in pairs. So I'll destroy this totem, and we're going to select an empty slot, move this one slightly above, and then create another one. There we go. Just make another pair just below that. Connect them using the little granny stick. And now, if we wanted to re-trigger either or, we could run another, uh, let's say, wire node right here, place a lever, and run the wire from this node let's say to this one, this totem. And this will have the trigger go from this node up here through the switch, which controls the entire operation. And then we can maybe move this node out of the way like that. Use the mallet to destroy this wire, place a wire right here. And now we can switch between the two. As long as I flip that switch, of course. And then we do need to make sure that it has the crystal since we destroyed the other one. Okay, and as long as our totems aren't crooked, it should create a perfectly straight line. Now, to make it sh make sure that it re-triggers the entire sequence, we can place another block node, connect them together, and... Perfect. 
Now, what if we don't don't want to switch these switches manually and keeping an eye on it? Maybe we're jamming out some uh, some mad solo using some carefully laid out uh, crystals just above. Well, we can always uh, we can always delete these switches, and we can automate the whole process by the use of a special type of object called a counter node. Now, the counter node works in a fascinating way. You can populate into a counter node a number of crystals to determine how many times each one of these outputs is going to be triggered. So let's say let's say we do this. Let's place one crystal in the beginning and two crystals afterwards. So I place one crystal in the beginning because we have to trigger the sequence ourselves once, and then this counter node will trigger the first sequence the second time. So I'm going to place a couple of these wire nodes just to keep things nice and neat. And we're going to run some wires here and down. And then the second one's going to go to the second sequence. And now, if I were to connect the triggers so that we can trigger this counter, I'm going to run the first signal. And it counts once. And then it goes to the second sequence. And it counts the second time. And then it starts to loop again. Now you can see that it only played the first loop once, and that's because there's only one crystal in the first input. If I place three, it's going to play it three times. There we go. Perfect. And of course, to clear things off of our playfield, we can go ahead and use the mallet tool and left click on all of our objects to clean things up. God, I hope nothing crashes because I'm pretty sure I caught all the exceptions. There we go. And that is it. This is how you play the game. That's pretty much all of the objects explained. We got the blocking node. This one destroys the trigger beam. And this one is the detect node, which doesn't destroy the trigger beam, but gets still triggered by a beam touching it. And of course, we've got our array of uh, percussive instruments, bass lines, and uh, just a little starting pack of sounds for uh, us to play with music. So that is it. Hope this helps. And um, hopefully I can make an adequate tutorial system soon.